this is some sage advice coming. Um, you know me. Uh, I love y'all, but I love itty bitties more. I love kids. I just because they just I believe the children are our future. Thank you. Um, whiteboard, blank canvas. I just look at kids like seeds. Like oh, we can plant and blossom into oh. And I look at adults like let me move, man. You already made your choices, Buster. <laughs> Weirdo. You know what I mean? So. I saw this and I was like, ah, this is something heavy on my heart. And the next topic really was heavy on my heart. But let's get into this sage advice of all of us have kids and we want to know what to do with them. And we know how invasive technology is now and smartphones and everywhere they go, they got internet access and Wi-Fi. Little kids say, what's your passcode? You're like, damn, the little kids go to Starbucks talking about Wi-Fi. It's crazy. But what should you do? What are the rules, regulations, guidelines you should enforce? Here's an interesting guideline that you maybe should, I don't know, subscribe to. I think I will. Let's listen to it. One, no smartphone before 14. You can give them a flip phone. You send them out. Give them a phone so you can, a flip phone so you can text them. They can text you. Call if they need to. But you do not give a child the internet in their pocket where strangers can reach them and they can watch beheading videos. You don't give that to a child to have with them all the time. Number two, no social media until 16. The kids say this themselves. 18-year-olds say this. They wish that this didn't exist, but they're stuck, they're trapped on it. So how about we just delay it till 16? Just don't let, ch don't let children go through puberty on social media. That's the really vulnerable time. Third norm, phone-free schools. Imagine, for those of you who went to school before the internet, imagine that the school had a new rule. You can bring in your television from home. You can bring in your walkie-talkies. You can bring in your record player. Put it all on your desk. We'll give you an outlet. And you can do that during class while the teacher's talking. This is complete insanity, but that's what we've done. That's what we've done. Sc any school that lets kids have the phone in their pocket. You know, my kids went to New York City public schools. And the rule is you can't take out your phone during class, which means that you have to hide it in, behind a book or under your desk if you want to text and watch video and watch porn, which the kids do. The fourth norm is far more independence, free play, and responsibility in the real world, just like everyone had until the 1990s. There can't be an adult guarding them all the time until they go to college. Love it. I'm taking notes, dog. <laughs> oh, man. Look, he hit on everything that I've been talking, whispering, hearing from all of my friends in our peer group of, like, what you going to do with this? Like, because I've been through this before, my oldest, who's 25, but she's 25. Like, you know, she was born in 99, so when she was an itty bitty, social media just started when she was like seven. You know, the internet started when she was born. So you're too young to even know what, what? I'm learning it, so you certainly not playing with it. You know, I remember uh, growing up with her, she had Blue's Clues. Is Blue's Clues still big time? Uh, Blue's Clues was a thing. We used to sit there on the TV, uh, in front of the TV, and watch Blue's Clues. Like, that was the thing, right? I wasn't just sticking the iPad in the room. I was there watching Blue's Clues. And then she gets of age and things start to change, and she becomes an adult. Now I got three little itty bitties, eight, five, and four. Let's talk through this. Because eight, blah, 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 the fire is right there, right? My eight-year-old, he likes watching YouTube creators. I, I vet them all, but I'm like, mm. We used to watch a few of them. We used to watch Mr. Beast. Um, and Mr. Beast is really good. A lot of positive things from Mr. Beast. Except you got a lot of homeboys that be talking crazy. <laughs> and they say words that eight-year-olds shouldn't say. You know, they're like, what the, what the frick? Or something, you know, like, what the fuck? Like, they do that. They do all that. Like, we right there at profane language, but we ain't. And it's still positive, but I was like, ah. Because my son, this is the problem. They don't have that filter. They're going to act out what they see, conditioning. That's why it's so important for us to raise our child, raise our children. Because if we don't, they will raise themselves and the streets happily will join them. <laughs> and they're going to be misguided. And they just going to absorb. You see it already. Kids coming to school, talking crazy, cursing. Got a big brother, don't you? Yep. Or bad parents. Yep. Simple. You can tell. It's every time. The bad kid, he ain't even a bad kid. I don't even like saying he a bad kid. He just regurgitating. Or he has no boundaries. So at home, his brother say, shut the fuck up. And then he come to school and he telling my son, who has never said that, shut the fuck up. Because he don't hear me say that. So, no smartphone. I agree. 
Now, here's the thing. We're all different. And we all have different, like, development stages and phases. Like, we develop differently. Like, I was a late bloomer. Like, I'm big as hell now. I wasn't big as hell when I was little. I wasn't normal either, but I wasn't this big, right? I went from, like, 85 percentile to, like, 99, 98. You can't say 14 uniformly, I don't feel, because there are some 14-year-olds ready for it. Like, I know some 14-year-olds, Michelle Clapman. Remember I talked about Tiffany Cambridge? Here's Michelle Clapman. Michelle Clapman was Michael Jolet. These were some mature kids, Jabari Magnus, my ace. Mature at 14, I feel like they're going to use it for good. Like, I got a report to do. Can I have my smartphone so I can be more effective and efficient? And then there are some kids, <laughs> like my boy Gumby and them, who pff, at 14 don't give it to him. He in them streets on them cyber streets. He out. He gone, right? So 14 uniformly, I'm not so certain about, but I am certain there's an age where no smartphone and you're going to be in the teens. So maybe 13, eh, we'll see. Based on your development, based on who you are and your design. Um, no social. Yeah, let's wait. You know why? Simply. I'm grown. Social media is addicting. Like, it's hard. It's hard for me to be like, all right, no more curly sites. Every time you go to my search, it's curly sites. <laughs> it's just like, look at these curly hair people. So beautiful, girl. Um, and then it's just ballers, athletes everywhere. I'm like, just look. Damn, he dunked on him like that. What? High school? Eight-year-old? And, and so I'm good. I don't need to compare myself to anybody else. I know what I got. I know what they got. I know what I've done. Blah. I'm not in the age where I'm trying to figure this thing out. I'm not stacking my Legos like that anymore. I'm not doing Tetris anymore. Where does this piece fit? Where does this piece fit? So I don't give a damn what y'all really doing. But when I was 8, 10, 12, I did. I used to go. I told you guys this story. I saw this guy by the name of Al Jones, who uh, was a high school football player phenom out here. Went to the University of New Mexico. Uh, got a little detour. Didn't make it to the league. Was a man child in high school. Six pack yoked up Al Jones was like 6'4, 210. Like, damn, Larry Fitzgerald in high school. I was like, God. I remember looking at him, I was like, I ain't. We went to a UCLA camp. I was like, I can't. I, 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 that was my social media. I was just looking at people like, I, I can't. I, I, and I'm good as hell. I can't do that. I ain't leaving. Look, what the fuck? You're like, you're like, what is it? Imagine, imagine I had something to access that would give me information and show me a thousand Al Jones. There's one in Syracuse. There's one in Des Moines. There's one in Wichita. There's one in Louisiana. I'm about to deal with that with my boy because I know he loves sports and he's going to keep playing it and all of a sudden, ooh, you rank this. Rank what? Fuck your ranking. What are you ranking? It's a marathon. You imagine watching somebody run a marathon and you're literally like, okay, you're 22. This is mile two, but you're 22. Shut up. I got a lot to run. I got a lot of running to do. Shut up. Don't stop. But you can't tell 12 year olds that, 14 year olds that, that it doesn't matter because their world is so small that everything's bigger in it. Everything that goes into an itty bitty's world is bigger to them because their world is so small. And you are, man, you're such a guardian to that globe that is their world, right? You got to help them spin it. So that's a good one. Uh, I don't know if I can wait to 16 for my kids. They look at me like, Daddy, everybody got one and I'm the one. And I'm doing good. I got good grades. You better. You live in this house. You got, I'm doing well in school. I'm, I'm volunteering. I'm a good citizen. I don't get a smartphone and social media and all these knuckleheads getting it. And that's the problem. Because the bad parents let their kids get it and their kids turn into knuckleheads. And then it looks like the bad kids are getting rewarded. Did y'all catch that? And your good kids sitting there pissed off. Resentment. Why am I doing all this good stuff? I don't get no good rewards. You give me all the vegetables. I want that damn candy. Give me that smartphone. Give me that social. Right? Right? Whew. It's tough out here. <laughs> Phone free schools. I love that. Matter of fact, I'm a my project transition. What's up? We are about to put an initiative together. Phone free. Because he right. Kids are putting it in their books, putting it in their lap. And so they're not learning. They're distracted. And they still engaging in the BS. All bad. All bad. 
Oh, I can hear the pushback. What if something happens at school? Go to your locker. Uh, what if, I don't know. I just don't want my kid distracted in class. And it was bad enough when I was in class, just looking at the cute girl in class, the pretty girl, looking at Tiffany Cambridge. What girl, what'd you say? <laughs> you know what I mean? And all that stuff. Jabari over there talking, shut up. You know what I mean? And that's without a phone. That's without me reaching all of the homies I saw at the summer camp that are now in different cities. My boy who was now in Santa Barbara. What are you doing? You up there, what? You surfing all day? You off? <laughs> Pay attention to learn the state capitals. I don't know why we had to learn that. Um, but I know me, if they would allow me to have my TV and my radio, you remember? I love my radio so much. If I could have played EPMD in class, that's the same thing having a smartphone sitting there right there and you got your little they got these little headphones you look put in here, right here. Look, do you see headphones right now? Look at this. Do you see headphones right now? And I'm looking at the teacher, I'm like this. I'm like, oh yeah. Oh, let me, let me do it right. Oh yeah, what'd you say? What is pi? 3.14, yeah. I see dead people. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I'm sorry, man, what'd you say? <laughs> if I could, I would. I would have brought it, man. And the last one is, what do you say? No adults guarding. Yes. Me and my wife are working through this one. I'm a step ahead of her, but not much ahead of her. I like, baby, let them work it out. It's okay to let them cry, argue, fight. We always, we referee in everything. Stop it. It's not good. It's not healthy. There's a part of your brain that needs to problem solve and, and, and fix things. And you got to have that because this world is gonna present problems to you. You gotta let them build up their hardware so the world can apply any software and they can write the code. They can go out there and solve it. So we gotta do that. Parents, even the good parents, and I'm, actually I'm speaking to only the good parents. The bad parents don't give a fuck. Boy, go out there, I don't care. What time are you coming back? <laughs> they ask the kid what time they coming back. Good parents, y'all, we break. it's okay. Go grab you the remote, grab you a drink, Sit down and let your kids run around. And when they go, ah, you know the different cries. You know this cry, ah, want some attention, fell, kind of scrape. Ah, ooh, fell hard, but it's going to be okay. Ah, ah, ah. Ooh, I better get out there. I better get out there. That boy might be leaking. <laughs> and then, uh, then the, the worst one, you don't hear nothing, but you heard, like a dog. Now, it might be a 911 case. You might have to get into Tesla and go, to, go straight to the hospital. Oh, God, this boy done fail. Oh, man, so I thought that was really interesting. Good stuff right there, man. So we'll figure it out together. Tell me what you guys are thinking in terms of antidotes to make sure your kids are fine.